Yo, what's going on guys? It's C-Rev. Welcome to What Would Brev Do? Episode 3. This is the series where I play an entire Ranked Seasons game from start to finish and talk about what's going on in my head the entire time. If you guys missed the first two episodes this year, those links are in the description below. And we have a ton of gameplay like this from last year. If you're interested, that's in the playlist as well. Today we're on the No Money Spent account. We're still hanging out in the mid-800s rating-wise with a couple of days before the season ends. So what better way to make the final World Series push than to record some of this gameplay? If you guys saw the last No Money Spent episode, the team is exactly the same. Uh, these are going to be the debut games for Schwarber in catcher and Brian Reynolds in right field. Super excited about both of those cards. And on the mound, we're going to have the newly upgraded Jacob deGrom, who I'm a really big fan of now. Um, they really get shown him a lot of love in the last couple of upgrades that they've given him. Um, they gave him Outlier a while ago, and then they just updated his forcing fastball and slider control to be at 99 on top of the attribute upgrades he's been getting now that he's upgraded to 96. I think the card is in a really good spot and is really strong right now, so I'm excited to use him. And if you missed it last year, we posted an entire What Would Brev Do on how I pitch with the 99 finest Jacob deGrom, um, if you want to go even deeper on this. I think deGrom's a good guy to have on the mound for this episode as well because he's not sinker cutter. Um, kind of more of an off-meta pitcher. I mean, outliers pretty meta, but you guys know what I mean. Um, and I think hard sliders have always been really good on this game, so I want to showcase kind of how I like to throw those as well. I think hard sliders are really strong uh, in this meta right now as well because there's a ton of people running a ton of switch hitters, and uh, hard sliders are good against opposite-handedness. So I really like throwing sliders to lefties with DeGrom. So... We are facing Paxton, who I've only faced once, and it was in roll call with a bad team. So we will see how this goes. Our lineup is set to face lefties um, as ideally as we can. I made sure to not have more than two lefties in my lineup, which would be my recommendation for you all in this meta right now as well. There's just way too many good lefty pitchers out there, and uh, running more than two lefties I think is a mistake. We also still are running Nico Goodrum at shortstop because I can't bring myself to take that guy out of the lineup. So here we are facing Paxton. Um, I have a ton of reps from Paxton. He was easily one of the most used pitchers for several months last year in the competitive community. So um, I personally don't think he's that good compared to how he looks on paper. But now that I said that, he's probably going to shut me out over eight innings. We'll see what he does. So sinker cutter there. Um, if you notice, he missed his spot for sinker of the game. Um, his, his Paxton is paralleled, so I'd assume he has some practice with him. But that was kind of weird. Um, again, we're being patient in the first inning. This is typically a spot where you see the off speed here. Let's see what he goes to. It was, in fact, a backdoor curveball. Kind of a weird pitch. We had our bat slow, and we were ready for it, and we line out. That is okay. Good swing to start the game. Uh, but, yeah, we're taking a bunch of pitches early on. One of the uh, things about Paxton, too, is that his sinker and cutter don't really feel like they have a lot of break, specifically his sinker. So... Uh, when I'm hitting against Paxton, I'm honestly kind of looking for sinkers down the middle or inside because I think it's his worst pitch, and people kind of tend to overthrow that pitch, and it's not a very good sinker. So, like, there would have been a good time to swing, but uh, I didn't pull the trigger. So, uh, one, two again. He's not going to throw a curveball because I crushed it last time. Nice down and in changeup. I thought he would go to the hard stuff there. That is way too fast. That's okay. Line out and a strikeout to start the game. Now we got Schwarber. Um, and left on left versus Paxton Lighter is really tough, which is why I suggest you don't run more than two lefties in your lineup at the moment. Um, they can run sinkers in on your hands. They can run cutters away from you. The timing windows are all kinds of whack. Um, and it's just really hard to hit left on left against a guy with sinker cutter. So we are being patient in this and bad as well. Um, I typically don't like swinging early in the count when there's nobody on base and the shift's on anyway. Uh, I just find that I ground into it a lot. So that was a really good tunnel for that four seam. We're going to have to protect against an inside sinker here. Let's see what he throws. We did protect, but we didn't move our PCI. <laughs> we center swung that. Still a decent swing, though. We kind of knew what to look for. We just didn't execute with our PCI. That's okay. I've had a worse one, two, three innings in my life. All right, pitching with DeGrom. Definitely in the first inning, I'm throwing lots of sliders. I think the best way to pitch with DeGrom is to just pretend that his slider is his primary pitch anyway. Um, it kind of allows you to establish like a middle velocity between his fastball and his changeup. Um, also, if people are being really aggressive in the first inning and they are facing DeGrom, usually people are sitting on fastball right away if someone's trying to catch you like first swing of the game. So that's why I throw a lot of sliders with DeGrom early on. He was all over that slider. 
Uh, he might have been late sighted good, but honestly, that probably should have been an extra base hit. We got a little bit lucky there, so uh, really good swing by him. We're going to go ahead and challenge him with a fastball now. Now that we've established that he's got the slider timing down, and he is super late on the outlier, so um, he might have accidentally had good timing on that slider. And uh, we're going to go right back to these fastballs now. He seems incredibly uncomfortable ver versus that fastball. Um, I am going to bury a changeup because it's 0-2, and I'm kind of predicting that he'll over-adjust here. Let's see. And he did. So if he went three fastballs there, he was going to turn and burn. Kind of just got that feeling that he was super uncomfortable um, against that fastball and that he was kind of just going to sell out there. So we have a waste pitch. Might as well use it. And he took the bait. So we're going to go right back to the fastball here now. Um, hopefully this guy can figure out his fastball timing so I can feature the slider more. I kind of don't want to have a gameplay where I'm just throwing up and in outlier all game but that's the beauty of outlier and the fact that uh, sometimes it gives you an auto win if you're playing against somebody on Hall of Fame or Legend Hall of Fame or Legend and they just can't catch up to the pitch speeds he's late again there um, I'm just gonna throw it again I'm not gonna try to do the same sequence I did last time and get him to chase a change up he is late again fouls it off though he's very late um, let's try to throw it down I don't want to go off speed here. I think it's bailing him out a little bit. And he is late and strikes out. Okay, so now we have a huge read on our opponent. Uh, the outlier is a problem. So we are going to be pitching off the four seam for the rest of the game, obviously. Uh, we're going to be trying to predict his adjustments to the fastball and uh, use the slider and fastball tunnels and the changeup as well, which I don't throw the changeup a whole lot, but it's really good in certain situations. Especially when you're looking for like double plays, I think that's where DeGrom's changeup and two seamer really shine is for contact outs. Up and away sinker, 0 2, kind of a weird pitch. We'll see if he tries to run a cutter in on my hands here. He went up and in with a four seam. Our uh, PCI was for a sinker there. If that was a sinker, I would have crushed it. <laughs> We're definitely struggling at the plate so far, but. We have seen some pitches. We've had good timing. Our PCI placement just isn't there. Once we start getting base runners and such, I think we're going to have a good time. This guy's not really pitching disrespectfully yet either, so we're able to kind of work the count and uh, just under that curveball. <laughs> Jeez. My PCI placement is so bad this game. Um, I don't know how you missed that pitch, but I did it. And uh, this is the mechanical errors that plague the Brev all the time. Our timing is so good. We are almost perfect timing every time. We just gotta figure it out mechanically. And uh, once again, in a left-on-left -left situation versus Paxton, not ideal, although Tommy's not shifted, so it's a little easier to swing early in the count, but really what you don't wanna do is be late on inside sinkers and be early on outside cutters when you're hitting left-on-left, -left. and it's really hard to not do both of those things. Last time he went inside fastball into a sinker, which we had good timing on, so I imagine he'll run a cutter away from me here. Nope, he went to the exact same sequence, so now we know he loves that. I'm surprised he went to that, because I put a pretty good swing on it last time. Nice down and in changeup that we fight off. Decent PCI placement there. I gotta imagine this is something outside at some point. Whew! Bad swing there. See what he goes to here. Man, relentless. Where is the cutter? <laughs> okay, we have some info. We will hit better, I promise. Uh, Trout is definitely a guy he wants to turn and burn with, so we're just going to throw a first pitch slider in case he's cheating. He was late on it. These videos, I really just try to focus on my gameplay and not my opponent's gameplay, but it doesn't appear that he's making a ton of adjustments on either side of the ball here. Uh, late side of good there on Trout. Lines it out. Good swing by him. Just late, actually. So we will just feature the fastball until he proves that he can adjust from it. I do kind of like throwing it down, too, if they're sitting on it. Kind of makes it a little harder to square up, in my opinion, than just jamming the PCI up and in as he squares one up into the gap. <laughs> okay, maybe he is making some adjustments. We'll see what happens. Definitely just going to throw another fastball here, though. I don't trust it. I don't believe that that was on purpose, and he's late. All right. Let's try to throw a high slider. This is a pitch I really like with DeGrom because it tunnels like a fastball. Um, if they're sitting on fastball, it's super strong. 
because you'll get him swinging early at it a lot. Uh, there was our first changeup of the game, and he is too early. So, unfortunately, we're in kind of a game theory spot where he's just guessing fast or slow. And at some point, he's going to guess right. So we kind of just have to stay on our toes and make sure we're making the right predictions. There's that down and in slider to the lefty. It's super hard. You can also throw it up and into lefties uh, with the hard slider from DeGrom. I think it's really strong as well. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to showcase either of those pitches. Uh, but again, we posted a full gameplay with him, with DeGrom, his 99 card last year, if you want to go back and watch that. A lot of good tunneling stuff in that one. Sinker, sinker, both kind of on the corner. Not really pitches we want to swing at early in the count. Nice little curveball take there. Good spot for that, honestly. And we'll see if he goes back to the hard stuff here. Beautiful tunnel there. Last time uh, to Simeon, he went up and in with a four seam, so that's a good tunnel there. Staying ahead of me on that one. Luckily, we foul it off. And uh, we are unable to lay off that sinker just off the plate. Another good spot, man. That's the one thing I've noticed about Paxton. Uh, the people who I've been facing that are pitching with him have been hitting their spots like crazy. So um, you're probably going to be looking at stuff on the corners for most of the game. It has been my experience versus this card. Kind of just wanted to swing first pitch there, just so uh, we don't fall behind in the count every time. Bad PCI placement again, but we are on the board with a base runner. Now it's kind of an awkward spot because usually I would strike out on purpose with my pitcher here, just to avoid hitting into a double play. I think I'm still going to. Uh, even though DeGrom can hit a little bit, it's still lefty-lefty versus Paxton. And uh, we definitely don't want a double play here, so I'm just going to go ahead and let him strike me out. Um, if I was facing a righty here, it, it might be a different story. I might let it rip with Jacob, but it's not worth the risk, in my opinion. Let's hit. Let's let Buxton hit with two outs here, and I think I'm first pitch hunting a sinker here. Doing it four seam. We're very late on that. I wonder if he keeps that in mind for later. Uh, I should not have ran on that. Luckily, his catcher missed it. <laughs> I was out by a mile. Definitely should have stayed at first there, but I guess it works out. Maybe we get a tilted four-seam fastball off the back of that. It is a sinker 3-1. He technically doesn't have to pitch to us, but he might want to with Soriano on deck. No, he just threw a curveball. Didn't want any part of Buxton for some reason. We take that walk, and now we are being super aggressive with Soriano. Again, fast bat first pitch. Sinker four-seam. And good on him for adjusting. Nice down and away changeup. He knew we were cheating there. See if he goes to the hard stuff now. He did. I don't think I got all of it. I did not. <laughs> Just off of it, man. Good at bat. Good inning. Still not on the board. These things happen. Um, that Soriano at bat was really strong, though, man. We, uh, we kind of sold out first pitch, and then we predicted him going back to the hard stuff second pitch and put a really good swing on it. All right, this guy is definitely having to sell out for the four seamers here, and he's really struggling right on right as well. So um, we may start featuring the slider more, but again, I don't want to respect him too much and uh, let him get away with not being able to hit a four seam unless he guesses. Try to bury this curveball again. This worked last time. Another waste pitch. Pretty basic pitching stuff there. Um, and now let's try this up slider again. Maybe we get him to swing early at it, sell out for the fastball. Yep, that is one of my favorite pitches with DeGrom, man. Right on right, the high slider. He was very early there and got lucky to foul it off. Uh, might be slightly embarrassed about that swing now as well. So let's just try to catch him looking down and away. And we did. So, a couple of things with mind games there. Um, sometimes when people take that bad of a swing, like honestly, by all accounts, he should have struck out with how early he was. Um, they kind of overcompensate, overadjust, and uh, try not to chase the next at bat. So I thought it was a good spot to kind of um, try to catch him looking. If he was sitting four seam, we were screwed there, but luckily we predicted it. Now just your standard pitcher at bat. Nothing to see. Easy first couple outs here. And uh, I'm going to elevate a fastball here. Last time he ripped a slider, so he might be sitting on it with Brian, but we'll see. I meant to say I'll elevate a fastball. I just realized I misspoke. I don't really want to throw him a slider here, man. It's uh, 
One of the only pitches he has done well with was that first Brian Roberts at bat. Try to change up low and away. The par's so big, I hope I don't miss my spot too bad over the middle. He was slightly early there. So, again, we should have probably stuck with the four seam. That was a decent swing by him, but uh, we're in an unfortunate state where he can't really hit the four seam unless he guesses, so we're trying to figure out when he's guessing, and it's just really awkward. But uh, we're pitching well, regardless. That is another curveball right down the middle that I missed. Man, I'm frustrated with myself. Just off of it with my PCI so many times this game. Good timing. He's thrown us twice now. First pitch curveballs right down the middle that we just missed. Frustrating stuff, man. Thought he might go four seam there. A little too aggressive in this semi at bat, maybe, to be honest with you. Nice little change up tunnel there. See what he goes with. He's been trying to bury stuff, but I haven't bit yet. A bit high twice now. So that, dude, did I hit that out? Are you serious? Yo. <laughs> Hello. Dude. I have nothing to say. I was completely fooled on that pitch. I was fooled the first time he did it to Schwarber. And I fouled it off. That's disgusting. Now we're going to be early on a sinker and go back to back here. Um. <laughs> When bad inputs are good and good inputs are bad, you get some games of MLB The Show. Dear God. I applaud this man for coming right at me with a four-seamer there. Maybe that was a tilted four-seam, but uh, those two swings were absolutely atrocious. Uh, I wish I could tell you guys that I'm playing well. But uh, we're on the board. So he's just been relentless inside, left on left. So we kind of have to protect against that now. We have to try and make an over adjustment here. If he goes cutter away, it is what it is. We are early on the four seam. He's staying inside. Uh, we'll see if he tries to tunnel an inside sinker here. But uh, he seems pretty bent on just staying inside against the lefties. So we're just going to have to sell out a little bit. And I uh, hope he doesn't throw a cutter. There's the cutter. We foul it off. We were late there trying to adjust to it. Good spot for it again. Again, fast bat, looking inside here and trying not to chase low. Yo, did I hit this out too? Dude, I actually, like, I don't even know if I want to post this because I'm so embarrassed that I just hit three solo home runs on those swings. <laughs> it's actually embarrassing. The, the fact that I'm winning is embarrassing. All right, moving on. Maybe y'all can get some pitching tips. Because obviously the PCI placement is not on point. All-American usually plays pretty well, too. This game has been so weird. Backdoor cutter there. And a perfect perfect's going to be a fly out. <laughs> you can't even make this up, man. It's the backwards game. All the good inputs are bad and all the bad inputs are good. So our goal moving forward, the adjustment we're going to make is we're going to take as bad a swings as we possibly can and uh, continue to score runs because that is the formula in this one. I don't know why I'm being so aggressive with Brian Reynolds at the dish here. Especially with the Grom on deck, a, a walk isn't the worst thing in the world here. Should be 3-0, but I swung at a ball. See what he goes with here. I think I might just take. Depends on what the pitch is. Yeah, 3-1. Taking all the way here. Opportunity to turn the lineup over if he walks me. Nobody on base. I think it's a good take. Nice little up and in four seam here. A typical sequence would be to then throw a cutter in here. We'll see what he goes with. Change up down and away. We jam the PCI to the corner and don't connect. But uh, we hit three solo shots. The only one that had good PCI placement was Groshans, and we were still early. The Tomy one and the Simeon one, those were so bad. But I will take it, I guess. You got to take the good with the bad, right? He wanted to swing at that, obviously. And uh, now I think being down 3 nothing, he might actually start pressing as well. So we may have to stay away from the four-seamer here, depending on how aggressive he is and how much he doesn't want to be late on it. All right, good adjustment. So that should have been gone. Uh, that was a better swing than I took with any of my home runs. And he is making good adjustments now. So I think 
What we want to do is go to the rocking chair. That was a perfect, perfect with Buxton that didn't get there. Feels bad. So we're going to go to the rocking chair here. He's kind of throwing me off with uh, his timings. Seems like he's adjusting pitch to pitch. Especially if he takes like a very early or very late swing. He's been really good at adjusting like immediately afterwards. So we're just going to hit him with the rocking chair now. Fast, slow, fast, slow. Again, the down and in slider to lefties, because it's so hard and it breaks so much, even though that was good timing, uh, still produce a really good out. We've done that a couple times versus a lefty this game. So now he's too late. So by rocking chair, we're going to then go off speed. Maybe I should have thrown this high for a better tunnel. And we catch him early. And now we're going to go back up and in. This is a typical sequence, but I think he's kind of over-adjusting now. And he is too late. So even though we threw that right down the middle, uh, we got him off balance. We've somehow seen 63 pitches from Paxton also. Um, nobody on pace. Pitcher leading off. We're going to take till two strikes. Make sure we get that pitch count up. Make sure we see some more pitches. Don't really want to like roll over first pitch with my pitcher. Especially left on left. Now that it's 0-2, we'll see what he goes with. He went with the curveball. DeGrom's fun, though, man. He can hit a little bit. And he's got a really glitchy swing. Like <laughs> He's always had that two-handed compact swing that is just everyone loves in the community. That was actually a good swing. Didn't go anywhere because it's my pitcher, but... Uh, yeah, nice. He is still hitting his corner spots really well too. Um, I think Tommy was the only, the only damage we've done on a pitch that was kind of down the middle. So Buxton again. He's typically been starting us with uh, hard stuff, although the Brian Reynolds at bat he went change up, change up. I wanted it. <laughs> it broke too much. Let's see if he goes back to the sinker here. Ooh, backdoor cutter. Nice pitch. Not going to do anything with that 2-1 count. We just take those. Mm. I need to get the bat off my shoulder. Yikes, dude. I'm actually playing so bad. <laughs> this has been an embarrassing display of hitting. The work in the count has worked in our favor, though, man. I feel like we've gotten deep into counts a lot this game. Even though we've only had, what, five base runners? Pitch counts up to 75. Probably get Paxton out of here by the seventh at the latest. He's not going to go front door sinker here again, right? No way he doubles up on that. I don't know what he's going to throw. I don't think it's a backdoor cutter. He might go inside. He did go to that front door sinker. And we flew out in foul territory. Jammed our PCI to the corner again. Another swing with good timing. Bad PCI placement. Unfortunate. This is uh, kind of turning into a not good situation for us as well. Because if at any point he just starts figuring out DeGrom... We're only up by three, and we're on the road. So we definitely need to figure it out at the plate ourselves to make sure we get some more insurance. Again, we're sticking with the rocking chair. See if he can now adjust to what we're doing. Bury this change up. Wasn't really believable, so I will actually go back to the slider here. Again, love this pitch. This is a classic tunnel in real life also. That's just disgusting. So nasty, man. The changes to the Grom make the card so much better. It, it honestly kind of feels like his finest card from last year now. Obviously worse per nines and stuff, but the stuff is there and the stuff is strong. He is late on the fastball again, so that confirms that our pitching approach has been good. Nothing we can do there. Just an unfortunate BABIP. And now we got to be a little careful about being repetitive. He should know I'm going up and in here. Yeah. Man, this is hard. <laughs> I'm out here just trying to predict this man's every adjustment. Another good swing by him. He seemed like he was a little bit under it. Um, and this could... Oh, he's a little bit off. This could typically be a spot where I'd think about walking the guy to try to get Paxson out of the game. Uh, but since we're up by three and Sam Huff can only make it a three to two game, we're just going to pitch to him. 
and uh, maybe we get Paxson out at the start of the sixth. Or the seventh, I mean, for us. Got him there. So we kind of went off of the rocking chair. He obviously adjusted. So we went double slider into fastball. Threw him off a bit. Again, the sequencing mind games. Trying to stay on top of everything. Man is still relentlessly pitching me inside left on left. I don't really want any part of it early in the count, though, especially with the shift on. So we kind of just got to take it. Um, I will be looking for off-speed outside that I can go the other way with against the shift early in the count here. That was it. It wasn't outside, but it was <laughs> down the middle. So terrible. Hey, that sinker's down the middle. He missed his spot finally. Well, he's missed his spot a lot, but we finally hit a pitch where he missed his spot. And Schwarber hits a bomb in his first game. Those are the kind of 0-2 pitches you want to see, man. And uh, I think we're going to let it rip first pitch here, too. Oof. He did not do the typical throw the four-seam fastball after giving up a bomb there. I'm just happy I scored on a swing that deserved to be a home run. That's exciting. We make the game one to nothing. <laughs> Actually, it should be like one to one with that Bucks and out he had. All right, this is probably a front door sinker again because he loves it. Nope. Good stuff, man. Keep me off balance. This guy has honestly pitched really well. It's hard to uh, try to predict pitches all the time, especially in videos, because it seems like I'm wrong a lot. <laughs> a lot more than uh, I would like to showcase, but uh, usually the when I can just predict someone's pitch over and over, it's because they're not pitching well. If someone's pitching well, it's hard to do, man. You just got to look for tendencies in big spots. 0-2 here. He went with the curveball again. I missed it again. Again, good timing. Again, bad PCI placement. We probably should have taken batting practice before this one. All right, same situation. Left on left with Tommy. Nobody on base. Being a little patient here. Looking for stuff down the middle, but uh, not really being too hyper-aggressive in this one. Cutter, cutter. Interesting. It's got to be something hard, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I think this is a single. I don't want to get thrown out at second. Uh, I didn't know he was going to botch it that bad. <laughs> we'll take the single, though. Um, and now we kind of actually have to be a little bit aggressive here because there's a there's a line he could take, which walks us to the Grom, who we're obviously not going to take out. So uh, we need to make sure we're hacking here with Nico and Brian Reynolds if he gets up. There we go. Hacking with Nico. I don't think I hit it out, though. Dang it. That's exactly the approach you want to take, though, there, man. We got a four seam. We ripped it to the track. That's what we want to do because, again, he could have easily loaded the bases to get to the Grom and get out of that. Um, and now we get Paxton out of the game after six. We had four runs on six hits, and I think we walked once. So could have been better, could have been worse for sure. But I'm happy to get to his bullpen because... Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to stretch this lead. So several times I've gone slider down and in first pitch, fastball up and in second pitch. So we're going to try to throw another slider here and tunnel it. I might have waited too long. It might be a tell. Um, kind of trying to stay away from the four seam a bit. See if he's cheating. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know what to do now. I'm just going to challenge him. We'll do the same thing we did earlier and challenge him. Yeah, he's late. Okay, nice. Man, every pitch is <laughs> intense. This is the worst pitch I've thrown all game. Please don't hang too bad. That was terrible. I don't know what happened with my pinpoint there. We'll go back to the classic sequence. Hopefully he's not sitting on it. Hopefully we've shown him enough that we've adjusted that he won't be looking for it anymore. And he does swing late and pop up. DeGrom is absolutely dealing, man. You can see, like, the vast majority of my pitches this game, too, have been fastball slider. Like, I really think if those are 80% of your pitches, I think you can do really, really good with this card. Obviously, he's super expensive. Um, but if you've done the Live Series collection anyway, you already have him. And I think he's in a really good spot. I'm going to throw this high slider one more time, just in case he's cheating fastball. Uh, sometimes you can get that to catch the corner, too. And they'll take it. 
And now we'll elevate a fastball for that tunnel. And then if he takes this, we'll go down with the changeup. Good take there. DeGrom's fastball is almost a little too fast. Like, you kind of have to throw it a little lower than that to get him to bite. And he does chase the changeup. So now we'll do the same thing earlier where we'll try to catch him looking because he did just chase and he's probably in the back of his head thinking he doesn't want to chase. And we catch him looking. This is an absolute pitching clinic. <laughs> We've scored some runs just so we win the game. But this episode's all about the pitching, man. Josh Hader with the changeup now, by the way. They updated his card to have a changeup. He's probably also getting a Team Affinity Stage 3 card, I would assume. Uh, we'll see. They don't typically like giving out relievers in Team Affinity for some reason, but we'll see if he gets one. Not much to say about Hater, honestly. I don't think his fastball is fast enough where you can't really just, like, react to it. I guess the best way to hit Josh Hater is to just sit off speed. That's kind of my been, kind of been my experience. His fastball only really tops out at, like, 96, 97. Um, do we strike out with our pitcher here? Yeah, what makes Josh Hader really good in real life is his spin rate, which is just not replicated in this game at all. So Josh Hader typically... Not too great. His per nines are really good, though, so on Legend you can get away with it. I'm actually going to strike out again. Poor Jacob DeGrom. <laughs> He's pitching so well, and I just won't let him swing the bat. I just kind of feel like I have a little bit of momentum after that leadoff single, and uh, I don't want to squander it with a double play for no reason there. He is throwing a lot of change-ups, which is kind of weird because it's his worst, worst pitch. Maybe because it's new. Hater's best pitch is his two-seam by far, in case you were wondering. This is a typical slider spot. Yep. Classic pitch there. Very similar to the DeGrom slider we've been throwing, although Hater's is slower and a little loopier. Down and away to Buxton. I'm going to go back to first base here with my runner. This is not smart in real life because <laughs> you can make outs on a home run. Uh, but I actually sent my runner back to first because if he did rob that, we were definitely going to be able to tag to second base there. So that's what we were thinking as that was flying. But thankfully, Buxton takes the backdoor slider and makes it 6-0. That makes this game extremely comfortable for us. And another home run where we actually took a decent swing. So that makes me happy that we didn't score all of our runs on garbage. We chase again. Man, I have not adjusted for that. We chased that three times, Jackson is there, two down. but uh, I guess we're kind of in a comfort spot now, right? I don't want to get complacent, but I feel a lot better about chasing that now than I would have if it was still three to nothing. <laughs> yeah, I threw away that at bat too. I need to stop assuming this game's over. I kind of assume the game's over now, but that Schwarber at bat was everything you don't want to do, so I apologize. Back to this sequence. Again, this hard slider against lefties, I've said it a thousand times this episode, but man, such a good meta for DeGrom because he's so, he's, has so much ability to get lefties out with his pitch repertoire. The fact that he throws so hard, the fact that this slider is so hard, he just tunnels really, really well against lefties. And uh, if you're in a spot where you're pitching to the opposite handedness, like obviously DeGrom's right handed pitching to lefties. I think a hard slider is infinitely better than a, than a cutter, even though sinker cutter's meta. I just think his pitch repertoire is so good. Um, he was actually on that, but we kind of put it in a weird spot, kind of a 7 pi over 6 there to try to miss his PCI. Seemed to work. He was sitting on it. He's early here. So, again, we accomplished our goal. Trout's the king of hitting early bombs. I'm sure his PCI was on that. Uh, but we got what we wanted with the timing. Again, DeGrom dealing. Soriano showing off the diamond defense. Going to start him off with a first pitch down and in four seam because we started him off with so many sliders so far. Nice free strike there. He's obviously going to try to adjust and not swing at that. Now let's tunnel off of that. See if he bites, makes it 0-2. He does, in fact, do that. And now a typical sequence for, would be for me to go back to the four seam down and in and try to catch him looking. He's going to expect that, so we're going to double up on the slider. And we get him to chase. Schwarber, you're killing me. No. <laughs> that was the best pitch sequence we have thrown the whole game. And uh, 
He gets a base runner out of it. Unbelievable. Hmm. He was all over that changeup. Alright, let's take four seam slider. These are the pitches we have control over anyways. Let's try an elevated fastball again. Maybe a little bit lower this time. <laughs> he was so ready. He's very early 102. That's so funny. I'm going to throw it again. There's no way he's not embarrassed about that swing. Good sake. And uh, let's try to throw the slider off the corner because we try to catch him looking twice. We did catch him looking twice. And just absolutely dominant. Man, this is... My advice to all of you would be to never assume that a game is over before it's over because that's the objective way to think about things. But uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't already phone it in this game. This game feels so over. This is the beauty of guys with Outlier, too, man. Like, again, DeGrom, the Outlier, the Hard Slider. Guys like Crochet. Not, crochet not as good because uh, he is left-handed, and they're kind of struggling at the moment. Well, they're not struggling, but lineups are ready for them. Uh, but Crochet is good in the same way that if you just run into somebody that really struggles with Outlier, it's just basically like a free win, like I said earlier. You just As long as you tunnel correctly... You could throw basically two pitches the whole game and make out with a complete game shutout, which is what I'm hoping we'll do here. This is probably a changeup. It's been its favorite pitch so far. No, sir. That's why Hater isn't that good, though. Only 95 on Hall of Fame. We uh, don't really need to sit on it. Kind of want him to walk me here. That'd be nice. Beautiful. All right, now we got some momentum. We have a little bit of rage quit equity here. If we can put one over the wall quickly, make it 8 nothing. Terrible swing. <laughs> so bad. And late side of good. Good spot for that. Try to be a little bit aggressive in that bat, but we just didn't execute again. Uh, but scoring here would be huge just to kind of make the game even more over than it already is. And if he just straight up quits, obviously we just win on the spot, right? So, good swing there, just off of it. Maybe not a pitch we would swing at earlier in the game. But again, we're really just trying to be a little bit aggressive here and, I don't know, get this game over with faster. Dang it. Bad PCI, man. It's all good. DeGrom goes into the bottom of the eighth. I wonder how many pitches we throw to them. Only 77 pitches. That is a beautiful sight. We're going back to the same good old tasks here. Good take by him. I'm actually going to bury a change up in case he's selling out fastball here. Yes, sir. Now we're going to go up and in fastball. Try to get a strike. I think he was early. Just late. All right, let's try this tunnel again. This looks like an up and in fastball. It could make him look foolish if I hit my spot. Wow. That's actually a ridiculous take. Let's try to throw it low again. Again, we're just trying to get him to chase these sliders like we have all game. And he cannot lay off. Just absolutely abusing these tunnels, man. Fastball slider. <laughs> If DeGrom had two pitches this game, I think we'd still be throwing a seven and a third inning shutout. Hmm. Lane on the slider there. This is probably a dumb pitch, but maybe we catch him looking with a front door slider. I haven't thrown this once. He was early. It kind of looked like a fastball tunnel, so that worked out. Another K. Vlad Guerrero Jr. off the bench. Please don't sell out fastball. He was late there. All right, good pitch. Good result. Exactly what we're looking for there, man. Nothing we can do about the fact that it's a double. We threw the right pitch in the right spot. That's all we can do, man. I really want the shutout, though. <laughs> My sequencing is so predictable, man. We'll do the same sequence we did to Reggie. Good take. Maybe he makes a mistake and goes to third. He did not here. All right, here's a good spot for me to showcase a two-seam fastball. This is literally the first time we've thrown it all game. The reason it's a good spot for the two-seamer is exactly that. The, 
When I throw the two-seamer with DeGrom, it's two situations. One, I need a double play. It's really good at inducing ground balls and contact outs like you just saw. And two, if I need to throw a strike and I know they're probably sitting uh, on the four-seam fastball, that's when I throw the two-seam fastball. Because if it's in the zone and they're selling out for four-seam, um, they're going to be swinging early at it. So I threw it outside, a little seven pie over six again to try to mess with the PCI placement. And... Uh, the first two-seamer we throw the whole game gets us exactly the result we're looking for. Backdoor slider again. Brian Reynolds has had himself a nice little game. I don't know why he went back to that after I crushed it with Buxton. Nice little leadoff double, and for once, Jacob can let it rip at the plate. We're sitting forcing fastball all day here. Good sinker. Chapman got downgraded to gold today as well. I guess I didn't realize how bad he's been pitching in real life recently. I <laughs> I keep seeing highlights of him blowing saves on Twitter, but then I looked at his stats and I did not know it was that bad. Especially because he was so dominant earlier in the year. Like he, I feel like the first month of the season he was unhittable. Look at Jacob. Oh, <laughs> almost poked it by. I'm surprised he's throwing so much off speed. Especially with his inclination to go inside, left on left. Just off the outside that time, laid off for a ball. This is quite the at bat from Jacob here, though. Ah, just late. Good wood on it again. All right, so now we got Buxton and Soriano again versus a lefty, which I'm a fan of. He could go right against Soriano, I guess. He really likes that. He's thrown that. Change up slash splitter below the zone. First pitch a lot towards the back half of this game. Kind of just looking for off speed, to be honest. Nice little down and in and down and away four seams. Does he triple up here? He did go sinker. That seemed like it broke so much for no reason. That was kind of nasty. Pretty typical take there. He tried to tunnel it with an up and in fastball, so now that's what I'm assuming he's going to go with yeah that was a classic tunnel pitch there that he was trying to do so that's why we were able to kind of figure that one out Woo! he would have caught me looking there if he hit his spot gotta watch out for the slider down and in now beautiful at bat byron now let's do some damage with soriano if this game's nine to nothing it is so over dang it <laughs> We sold out four seam again. He's doing a good job staying away from it, to be honest. Dude, this backdoor sliders. He's got to stop. He crushed it so many times. Unfortunate line out there. Let's see if Schwarber can cap off his debut game with another bomb. That swing's not going to do it. Not even close on that swing. No balls and a strike. Mm. Behind 0 2 now. This is tough. 0 2 left on left. I'm just selling out fastball though, because. Yeah. <laughs> Good tunnel. This, uh. This has been a pitching episode, let's just say that. DeGrom's going to get this complete game shut out though. Thrown down at away sliders a lot. First pitch to righties, specifically to Sam Huff, like every at bat, so. Going first pitch fastball there, I think is good. 0-2 now, tough spot for him. We're gonna go back to the trusty buried changeup into painted four seam, and he just bites on the changeup and bails us out. We don't even need to throw the second pitch. Beautiful stuff from Jacob. Still not even a hundred pitches thrown, and uh, I feel like he's kind of frustrated. So I'm definitely not gonna throw a four seam down and in here. Maybe he chases. Good on him, man. He seems pretty level-headed. This is another good two-seam spot because I don't want him to turn and burn on a four-seam. Oh, no. <laughs> we should have gone four-seam. Nah, it was a good pitch. Good swing by him. Dang it. It's ruined. He ruined my masterpiece. Great swing, man. I, was, I actually just made a mistake here, too, not throwing fastball. Um, after you give up a bomb, it's kind of subconscious to throw like the opposite pitch of what you threw or your primary pitch. One of those two things can happen. I kind of just 
autopiloted a slider there. I'm going to double up on that because he was so all over it that he probably thinks I'm going to go slider now. Yeah, he was super late. Now we go slider, and then we try to paint the down and away four seam if he doesn't bite here. He did bite. Beautiful. I'm so sad I gave up that bomb, man. Oh, this has been such a well-pitched game. Final boss, Kyle Seeger. Strike one. We go down and away four seam here, too. See if he takes that also. Beautiful. And uh, the classic pitch, the pitch we relied on the most this game for the final strike. Grounds it out to first. That is the W. So let me know what you guys thought of this episode. Um, definitely could have been better with the commentary, looking back on it now, and we definitely could have hit better. But uh, Jacob DeGrom, nine innings, four hits, one earned, and 17 strikeouts. You don't need sinker cutter to have success on the game. Obviously, having outlier helps a lot. <laughs> Obviously, having max control on your four-seam and slider helps a lot. Um, but we just absolutely diced that guy for nine innings, and we basically only threw two pitches the whole time. So hopefully you guys learned some stuff. If you guys want another guy like Jacob deGrom that the tunnels work really well with, obviously Crochet, um, although he's a little bit worse. And then one really under-the-radar guy, I'll go ahead and show you. Um, I don't actually have him on this account, but one really under-the-radar guy that really fits the Jacob deGrom um, like archetype is uh, Jackson Rutledge. He doesn't have outlier, but he's got max break on his slider. I think he's a really underrated card uh, for a 92 overall. I rated him pretty low in my stage two rankings, um, but 87 control on the slider and max break on the slider. He's also six foot eight. So those high tunnels are a lot better because he's so tall on the mound. Somebody using a strike zone camera those pitches are going to look like they're coming in from outer space. So really super underrated card. Another guy that has basically the exact same repertoire as DeGrom, except for no two seam and his slider is a little bit slower, but still hard enough. You can gas his slider up to 90. So I think it's a really good card. If you want to use another guy that pitches like I showed with DeGrom in this one, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, we are a couple wins away from world series now on this account, and we will be streaming the rest of them uh, tonight. So make sure to check that out. If you are so inclined Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.